The Volunteer Center of the Triad just completed the 26th annual human race, which this year was virtual. This 5K and fun run event raises funds for over 78 nonprofits in the community. With the virtual pivot, racers were able to download an app that would track their distance and upload their time. They were able to race on their own, allowing us to still award the top three fastest racers for men and women. The fastest runners in the men's category were Jacob Perkins, Jonas Segay, and Caleb Termel. The fastest runners in the women's category were Blaine Haddis, Paige Sprinkle, and Beth Sanders. This event is really all about fundraising, and again, with 78 nonprofits, we raised over $100,000 that is going to be distributed to all of these nonprofits in our community to allow them to further their missions. Normally, we have a stage ceremony where we get to celebrate the top fundraisers. This year, because everything was virtual, we are announcing those top fundraising winners now. Nonprofits and companies alike are able to create teams that allow them to fundraise for causes they really care about or for their own missions. Congratulations to the following nonprofit teams for being in the top five fundraising nonprofits. Haynes Inman Education Center PTA raised over $6,700. Bingo Pet Hospice raised over $5,000. Urban Mets Education Center PTA raised over $5,000. Interactive Resource Center raised over $4,100. And Epilepsy Alliance North Carolina also raised over $4,100. Stay tuned and listen to some of these nonprofit organizations about their missions, why they participate in the human race, and to give you all a special thank you for supporting this event. Hi, I'm Pat Gibson, and I'm the Executive Director of the Epilepsy Alliance, North Carolina. Um, we do a, a lot of direct services to patients with epilepsy and their families, and one of our biggest priorities is our epilepsy medication fund. Um, I don't have to say to any of you how, what a struggle many people are having now, having lost jobs, lost insurance, and we've had a great struggle because donations are not coming in and we've not been able to have a lot of our fundraisers and we are very grateful to you jordan and to the volunteer center for your efforts to hold something that we could still raise money with um, almost uh, all of our money goes to buying medicine for people ac across the state of north carolina who have epilepsy and if you've never bought one of these medicines out of pocket, you know, I have many kids whose medicine costs 3000 a month. That's, that's not the highest, but that's, that's, that is a common amount that many people are paying for medicine. And I don't know about you, but I could not afford to pay 3000 a month out of pocket. So we've got a lot of kids and adults out there who are really struggling. And if they don't get their medicine, they may have seizures or they will have seizures if they're not getting their medicine. And they can die, you can die in a seizure. So what we're doing is really important to try to keep everybody in medicine so that they can continue to function and hold jobs and drive and do what everybody else does. So we are grateful for your agency and for all the people who supported us. We need more help. And we hope next year to be number one in the fundraiser. So thank you again so much. Hi, my name is Sue Harvey, and I am the proud, proud principal of Herbin Meth Education Center. And I'd love to take this opportunity to say thank you to everyone who donated. We have had a really tough time from the school system standpoint over the past few months, obviously. And this is just the start of what we know will be some pretty significant financial issues that we have coming up in the next year or longer. So we had planned on using our money to purchase iPads and that's still the plan because communication is very important for our students at Herb and Mets. Many of our kids are diagnosed with autism 
and learning disabilities, uh, intellectual disabilities, moderate to severe to be more specific. And many of our students have a difficult time being able to communicate iPads are going to help us be able to have them express themselves and be able to tell folks what they want, what they need, comment on things. And so we are going to continue down the same road of focusing on purchasing iPads and having apps that are going to be able to have our students' voices be heard. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. And anybody who wants to come and volunteer at Herb and Matt's Education Center, we would love for you to come. We are one of four public separate schools here in Guilford County Schools, and we completely appreciate any love and support you can give us because we will return it to you. Hey, my name's Kevin Carr, and uh, I'm the luckiest guy in town. I'm the principal at Ains Inman Education Center. Uh, we're a school for kids with significant disabilities. Uh, we range in ages from 3 to 22. Um, we've participated in the, uh, in the human race for, uh, for the last 10 years. We've been open now for, for 10 years, and we've been fortunate to be one of the top fundraisers each of, the, each of those years. And the, the money's helped us with, with quite a bit of things. We've been able to put in an accessible playground for all of our students. Uh, we've been able to purchase some support technology to help our kids with, with communication and, and some of their significance. Um, I'd like to think we've got the happiest place in town and we like to keep it that way. And participating in the human race does a couple of things for us. One, it lets us say yes to, to most of our kids' needs all, all year long. Um, and then the second thing that it does is I think, you know, sometimes when you're working at a, at a separate school, one of the things we have to worry about is isolation of our kids. And this helps us to be part of a larger community. And uh, we like the fact that, uh, certainly we, we benefit from it, but we like the fact that some of our funds go to other people that go to the volunteer center and things. So, uh, you know, like we think it's very important for, uh, for us not only to, uh, to, to say thank you, but to give back a little bit. And uh, being able to participate with a larger community is, is very important to us. So I'd like to say thank you also to the volunteer center. Hi, I'm Carrie Nance. I'm the Grants and Volunteer Coordinator with the Interactive Resource Center. Um, we are so thrilled with what we were able to fundraise through the human race. Um, it was a really nice surprise and we can absolutely use every cent of that money. On a normal day at the Interactive Resource Center, we are providing resources to men and women and families in Greensboro who are experiencing homelessness. So showers, laundry, um, medical assistance, at least to check your mail, things like that. But since COVID uh, struck, we have been providing um, hotel rooms for those individuals experiencing homelessness in Greensboro. So right now that looks like um, over a hundred individuals and families in hotels. We are providing meals, three meals a day to all of those people every single day, Monday through Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Um, we are providing medical care to them. We're providing transportation to doctor's appointments. We have nurses from Cone Health that are coming in and doing checks on these people um, several times a week. We've also been able to provide uh, coronavirus testing for everyone that's staying in a hotel. Um, and we were very pleased when we did our first round of testing to find out that keeping everyone in hotel rooms as opposed to in the shelter space was um, basically kept all of these people from contracting coronavirus thus far. So we were thrilled with that result. And um, we've been working really hard to try and get as many of these individuals and families housed while they're in this space and have that kind of stability. Um, but that comes at a very high cost. So um, between the meals and the cost of the hotel rooms, um, we are paying uh, upwards of $30,000 a week to, to keep these folks in hotel rooms. Um, we're hoping to do this through the month of July, if possible. So um, all of this money that we raise through the human race will go towards that. And um, we're so thankful for that. And, you know, um, anything that anyone in the community can contribute to that would be great. But we're just grateful for what we what we got last week. So thank you so much. 
Local companies are also able to create teams and gather the troops to raise money for causes they care about. Our top three fundraising company teams were Bank of America, Weaver Cook Construction Company, and Renewal by Anderson. Bank of America raised over $14,000 for over 13 nonprofit organizations. Weaver Cook Construction raised over $1,200 for three different nonprofit organizations. And Renewal by Anderson raised $735 specifically for Operation Pause for Homes. Thank you to these companies and your dedication. Now hear from them on why they participate in the human race. Hi, my name is Daryl Hodge. I'm the CEO for Renewal by Anderson of Central North Carolina. Uh, we participated in the human race this year. At Renewal by Anderson, we don't think of it as giving back. We think of it as paying it forward. Um, we love getting involved in the community. We really enjoy being a sponsor of the Volunteer Center, the human race this year. We really had a great job, especially uh, in these times where we can't get out and actually run. The organizers of the race did an amazing job putting everything together. Uh, you know, switched it to a virtual event, which was an amazing thing. Our two offices, Raleigh and Greensboro, actually participated in it. We enjoyed, obviously, walking and uh, racing together. That was really nice. Uh, we enjoyed getting outside, getting making our community feel a little bit stronger in there. Um, I can tell you Operation Falls for Homes is incredibly thankful uh, for the human race and as well as their support of the event. Uh, the funds that are provided from us are actually going to help dogs and cats get to their forever homes, uh, transportation costs, things like that. Uh, spaying and neutering of dogs and cats as well as whenever an animal comes in with some unforeseen medical conditions, uh, it helps that animal get better. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of Bank of America, we're thrilled to accept today's award and recognition for our team efforts to really help our community in a significant way. There's no time like the presence for really meeting the needs of the challenges within our community. I'm so thrilled to be leading an amazing group of associates that are committed to helping the communities that we serve. Thank you again for this special recognition. Every year we celebrate one of those companies with a corporate challenge award. This award is given to the most funds raised per team member. Bank of America has won again this year with 13 different teams of individuals within their organization raising funds for different nonprofits. Thank you for all you do for our community. Again, thank you for additional recognition to Bank of America this year as the 2020 Corporate Challenge Award winner. We're thrilled to be a repeat recipient of this award. And thank you again for our associates who all played a key role in winning this award, award again that means so much to our organization. And we're proud uh, to represent all the terrific corporations that have partnered for many years to make this event a success for many nonprofits in our community. Thank you again for this recognition. All of these teams are made up of dedicated community individuals. We always like to recognize our top 10 individual fundraisers. Thank you to Shelly Wheeler, Jan Linder, Lauren Roach, Heather Pryor, Amy Underwood, Kelly Gallerani, Blaine Haddis, Rachel Summerlee, Michelle Kennedy, and Gloria Gamble. Hear from Shelly and Gloria on why they participate in this event and what this means to them. My name is Shelly Wheeler and I work for Bank of America and I am very pleased to have been a part of this virtual human race, which I thought was magnificent. This, is my, this was my 25th anniversary with the human race. So obviously um, I have a lot of passion um, I can tell you that my first experience with the human race actually changed my approach to life in general very profoundly. I, I had this huge wake up call when I saw all these incredible nonprofits and all our participants and realized I needed to do more and I needed to give back. And I realized how truly blessed I am um, in my work life and in my personal life. So um, I was very pleased this time to support two nonprofits one being Community Housing Solutions, um, a wonderful organization that works with low-income families, especially elderly folks, to make their homes safer, drier, warmer, to allow these folks to age in place, right? 
um, as opposed to going to assisted living or other arenas that are not optimal. Um, they do a magnificent job in Guilford County, so very pleased to support them. And then also my other passion is the Women's Resource Center. Um, they are brilliant at giving a hand up, not a hand out to women um, in terms of professional growth, personal needs, referencing to probably over 300 different organizations uh, to give that hand up to our, our women in, the, in Guilford County. Um, so those are, those are my two passions, but overarchingly, I would say that the human race is, is truly um, one of the few events that you can go to in this geographical area where so many nonprofits in our community are supported and supported so strongly. So, uh, hi, I'm Gloria Gamble, and uh, I supported Tri Triad Golden Retriever Rescue in the human race. Uh, a friend asked me to walk in it a couple of years ago, so I uh, participated in walking, and uh, I saw how many nonprofits were uh, um, recognized and there, and I thought it was great, and there were so many people, and they were so excited. So it was fun actually walking in the race. But uh, so this year, uh, I again supported uh, Tri Golden Retriever Rescue, and I set my goal really high. Uh, once I saw uh, everything that they do and what they do for these animals, um, so much about placing dogs and all the everything they go through and uh, what happens on the back end that nobody sees. So it's a great thing. Thank you to all who tuned in live, who supported this cause, either by participating, donating, or even creating a team to help fundraise for our nonprofit community. It's more important now than ever. Keep up yeah. the good work. Woo